Welcome back, guys. We have fully, hopefully, absorbed the idea of a proposition, and we're ready for the next level. So do you remember when we were talking about propositions, and we would say things like, if we had, let's see, let me show you an example. We had things like, maybe, x plus 2 equals 3. We said that wasn't a proposition because we couldn't determine the truth value. But that seems like a pretty important statement in mathematics, so we must have some sort of logical tools to deal with a statement like this. And we do. We have predicates, which I think are, you know, just like functions in algebra. But with functions in algebra, you've got outputs of numbers generally, and, or maybe no output, but, but with predicates, our outputs are going to be truth values. We'll do some examples to make sense of that. So we're going to start with introducing the idea of predicates, talking about the domain, and we'll be, then we'll be able to quantify the variables in the statement we're trying to make. So is the statement true for all these types of variables, or just one or some? And then we're going to talk about negation, just like we did with propositions. We need to negate these predicates and the, the quantifiers to deal with them in um, logical situations where maybe we want to try to prove an equivalent statement, but we need to negate, you know, like we wanted to use the contrapositive. P implies Q is logically equivalent to not Q implies not P. Well, we need to know how to negate these quantifiers then. Then, um... Yeah, so I think I think that should get you started. That's kind of what we're going to talk about here with predicates. For now, we're just going to introduce predicates in this video. But, so I want to give you a little bit of preview. Um, so let's say I want to represent this symbolically. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is talk about the domain of my predicate, introduce a predicate, and then write the statement. Okay. So I'm going to say my variable, my variable n, I'm going to say the domain of n is all integers, okay? Post on the discussion board, what's an integer? Uh, what are those different uh, sets of numbers, okay? Some, some of the most um, widely used sets of numbers, okay? Integers, real numbers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, natural numbers, blah, 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 okay? Think about that. So we're gonna have the domain of our variable in question here to be all integers. And our predicate, let's call it E, since we're talking about even numbers. Let's say E of N means N is even. So the output of this so let's see, output of E of N is going to be a truth value, is true or false. Input better be an integer, right? If it's not an integer, because we're, we're constricting our domain to that, input is some integer. So an example to help you understand this predicate, E of, remember we're only going to evaluate for integers, E of zero is true, right? Zero is, is zero times two, so it can be written as the product of two times some integer, so it is even. E of one would be false. There's no way that I can write one as the product of two and some integer. I can write it as two times some rational number, but that's not the, the, the issue at hand. We want to write it as two times some integer by definition. So, how are we going to write this out fancy uh, so that you can get more familiar with all the notation that you might see floating around the, the place? I'm going to write it as, and you know, I've already given a domain here, but let's suppose I didn't. So for any, for any, this is this little upside down A. It means for all, for any, for any N in the integers, that means element of, you're going to learn that next about sets. So let's break down what this is. So for all integers n. Now, 
these quantifiers are important. They, you have to put parentheses so they apply to the entire statement, okay? Um, and I'll write e of n squared if and only if with my biconditional e of n. So that's how I would write the statement symbolically. And there's other inter interpretations and ways of writing it symbolically that you'll see, but that'll give you a little sneak peek there of, of the notation that we're going to build on. We're going to talk about these quantifiers in the next video, so don't, don't worry about that too much right now, okay? Yeah, so, so we need to be able to talk about objects and their properties and relations. So we, we need a, some way to evaluate the truth depending on our input. Just like in algebra, right? We need stuff beyond 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? That doesn't get us very far. We need to be able to, to create functions, to be able to do things uh, for financial world, for a scientific community, for all sorts of people, right? Um, so for an example, right? Just like we input in an integer here, maybe we, enter, we input a, uh, a real number here. So maybe we input negative 3. So we say our output is going to be whatever our input is squared. So, hey, careful with this negative, right? Do you guys remember? Okay, so that's an example there of a function that works really similarly to predicates, but predicates have an output of true or false. This had a numerical output. Our, predica our predicates have output of true or false, okay? So make sure you are good with that. Okay, so let's let's get kind of some terminology straight here. We're going to be dealing with variables, just like in algebra. Okay, our variables might take on uh, specific characteristics like their integers or positive real numbers or any real number, or they might be natural numbers. Okay, make sure you've uh, kind of investigated those sets. We'll actually talk about them when we when we get to sets. I think a bit. So. Um, so our pr a predicate here, this is another example, p of x, is, represents the, the statement x is greater than 3. So this is our propositional function, right? It, I mean, it works really similar to a proposition, right? The only thing is that depending on what we plug in allows us to have sometimes true, term, sometimes false. Okay, and, and we can't, if I just look at, let's, let's say, what's p of y? I don't know, right? I don't know what y is. So in order to evaluate the truth of a predicate, I have to have some sort of um, information about y. Sometimes you might have a quantifier and a predicate that has a truth value because we can, we can see something about it, like, like this last example, the one that we talked about right away. This one has a truth value. This is true, even though we're dealing, because we, we quantify the variable in question, okay? So these are our quantifiers we're going to be dealing with. This is for all, so this is uh, for for one or more, okay? There exists, that's how you would read it. And then this exclamation point, there exists exactly one, so it's unique. Um, and, and we'll talk about those more in the next video, just to kind of give you a heads up there with notation, okay? So we need to make sure to define when we're talking about our predicate, we need to define our domain and clearly define what our predicate means. So this is another example of a predicate. We've got that our input is uh, strictly positive. So can't be zero, right? What's, well, hey, we've got examples here to do. What's P of negative three? All right, let's plug negative three into our statement, see if it's a true or false statement. So if instead of X, we write negative 3, what happens? Negative 3 is greater than 0. No, it's not. So this would be false. Okay. Uh, P of 0. Let's plug that in to see what happens. Is 0 greater than 0? No way it's not. It's equal, right? If we had changed this predicate to be x greater than or equal to, what would be the truth value there? Discuss, discuss, discuss. So P of 0 is false. All right, p of three, p of three. Plug three into our predicate. Three, or predicate statement. Three, greater than zero, definitely, yes, right? So this is true, okay? So you do some more practice here uh, with the quiz and stuff uh, after these few more slides. Okay, now 
just as there was a need with functions to have multiple variables, there's a need with predicates to have multiple variables. Our statement might contain more than one unknown or thing we want to check to see if it satisfies our predicate. So this is an example, right? If I want to plug in, uh, let's suppose I want to plug in one and two, or now let's do something a little bit more fun here. They're not cooperating with me. So f of uh, three and negative five. Okay. Now notice the order that I'm inputting these into this function can be really important. So make sure you're careful about that when you've got predicates containing more than one variable. Okay. So instead of x, I'm going to write three. Instead of y, I write negative five. So x of three negative five is negative two. Again, with a predicate containing more than one variable, we're going to have a truth value output, output, true or false. Here we have a numerical output because it's a function, an algebraic function. Okay. All right, so here's an example of a predicate with multiple variables. So we have a statement that we want our inputs to satisfy, and we have a domain of all integers. Okay. So we want to input some values for x, y, and z and see if it's true that if I subtract y from x, I get z. Okay, so let's go, let's go ahead and check, uh, let's check one of them. I think I'll leave a couple of them up for you in the quiz, so you can totally do this. Let's think about q of 2, negative 1, 3. Oops. So, Instead of x, I'm going to write 2. Instead of y, I'm going to write negative 1. Instead of, instead of z, sorry guys, one minute. Instead of z, I'm going to write 3. So let's plug in all those values and see what happens. So 2 minus negative 1 is equal to is equal to <laughs> 3. Okay, is that true or false? The, the issue I was having with that equal sign before is because q of 2, negative 1, 3 is not equal to x minus y, right? Is equal to true or false. We have to plug in those values to x minus y equals z, see if that's true or false, okay? So 2 minus 1, 2 minus negative 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So this is true. So try these two in your quiz, okay? All right, just with propositions, we went to learn about propositions, combining them with some connectives. We can do that too here. Um, and actually, we already know these truth values, so we're going to deal with them the same as we did before. So take a moment, see if you can figure out these four truth values. So p of 3, so first you need to know what the truth value of each of the predicate inputs are, right? So what's p of 3? What's p of negative 1? Well, I know p of 3 is true, right, because 3 is greater than 0. I know p of negative 1 is false, okay? So the way I read this is I've got, for this first one, I've got true or false. So that's true. The first one's true. The second one, I've got true and uh, true and false is false, right? I've got true implies false is false. True if and only if false is false. What about these guys? What do you know about those? Think about that for the quiz, okay? All right, so you have a quiz over just some basic predicate kind of stuff and maybe some logical connectives in there. And then we'll come back and talk about quantifiers. Thanks so much, you guys. Oh, hello. <laughs>